So it's an absolute pleasure to not only uh, kick off this afternoon, uh, but certainly a pleasure as well to be part of the global TED conversation because uh, it's an absolutely amazing exchange of ideas. Uh, and I am just as excited about hearing uh, my other speakers today or the other speakers that are here. Uh, so I think we're going to have a lot of fun. So philanthropy uh, and Invented Here, uh, two themes that I wanted to talk about today. Uh, when I was about four years old, uh, my family moved from downtown Philadelphia to the Philadelphia suburbs. And uh, my father, who at the time was, believe it or not, based on the venue that we are in, the director of the library uh, at the Philadelphia Bulletin, which is a now defunct newspaper, uh, but he was the director of the library. And he wanted to contribute to the community that he was moving to. So by his day job was the director of the library, uh, but in his personal life, what he decided to do uh, was become very involved in politics. And my father was a Democrat, and the reason why in context that is important is that the area that we lived in, in Philadelphia, was actually one of the most Republican areas of the United States, and actually yielded four members of Ronald Reagan's cabinet. So, so, think, so think about being a Democrat in that environment. But as the oldest of four, uh, I was daddy's little girl, and I was his acolyte, and so I used to father, follow my father all over the place. So I went down to campaign headquarters and used to stick envelope, or stamps on envelopes, and I used to follow him around as he went door to door, and I learned how to stuff envelopes faster than any seven-year-old and uh, probably the face of the earth. Um, but that stayed with me, and, and I continued to follow my father uh, as I went through high school and had the opportunity to work with him on my first big presidential campaign in 1972. Now, as I look around the room, I realize that there's a lot of people in this room who may not even have been born then. Um, so just by point of reference, the rest of you who are giggling know as a Democrat, 1972 was not a good year. But I went to campaign headquarters that night with my father because I thought this was going to be so much fun, you know, watching the election returns come in and, and being a part of this. And it was an absolute slaughter of George McGovern. So as I watched literally the, the big map on the wall, you know, go entirely red, the only two states that George McGovern won were Massachusetts and the District of Columbia. I turned around to my father, who I adored, and I said, why do you do this? <laughs> this is not fun. And my father looked at me and said, I really believe I can make a difference. No matter how hard it is, I'm always going to try. And that has stayed with me through my entire professional career. So as I entered the gaming world, and again, I've been you know, in the business for over 30 years. Of course, I started when I was eight, right? Um, I've been in the business for over 30 years. Uh, as I entered the gaming world, I brought that with me because I saw so many organizations uh, that I believed that I could make a difference, where I could contribute my time, my treasure, my talents, my skills, whatever it might be, to make a difference in those organizations. And, uh, and it's something that's really become a part of me. So when I joined Isle of Capri uh, in 2007 as the Chief Operating Officer, I was part of a turnaround team, and our job was basically to take this wonderful organization, which was a good company, and turn it into a great company. And we had such absolutely amazing ideas on how to do this, and had just started implementing them when all of a sudden in 2008, the bottom fell out of the economy. And we, along with many other companies, not just gaming companies, but many other companies, we found ourselves, instead of being able to do all of these great things, that we were going to do in terms of relaunching and rebranding our company, we were in survival mode. And we had to literally take this wonderful, intelligent group of people that we had put together and put a plan to survive. And we did. But it was with austerity measures. And one of the things that we had to do was pretty much cut all of our charitable giving, which was something that just, I mean, really struck at my heart. Because, because of all these organizations that I had worked with, I understood how important philanthropy was for them to survive. And so I was always trying to figure out a way, what can we do? You know, kind of think out of the box, what can we do uh, in order to help these organizations? So about a year into this, uh, our founder died. Now, Bernie Goldstein would have loved this event. Bernie Goldstein was what I affectionately refer to, yes, that is him kissing a shark. 
Um, what Bernie did, he, he was what I affectionately refer to as a serial entrepreneur. So Isle of Capri was only one of the companies that he founded, and actually founded when he was in retirement. But every company that Bernie founded, no matter what discipline, no matter what industry, the one thing that Bernie instilled upon his organization was to give back to the community. Because Bernie truly believed being a part of every single community that he operated in. So when Bernie died, we were trying to figure out what can you do to honor someone like that. And so I kind of went back to a little of Isle of Capri history to Hurricane Katrina. <clears throat> Isle of Capri had previously been headquartered in Biloxi, Mississippi. The only reason, quite frankly, that we're headquartered in St. Louis was because our corporate office was literally wiped out by Katrina. Now, when I say wiped out, I mean people who lost their houses and everything else. The corporate office itself wasn't really all that uh, damaged, but our casino was. And we pretty much lost our entire casino. Our hotel was very damaged, but, but somewhat serviceable. But Bernie understood how important it was to make sure that his employees were able to get their lives back together again. So we were the first casino a bare seven days after Katrina struck. We were the first ones to actually set up a payroll department so we could get checks in the hands of our employees. We went to our 15 sister properties across the United States and said, send us truckloads of blankets and pillows, anything else, you know, canned goods, anything that we could do in order to get everybody back up and running again. And then invited the rescue and relief workers into our hotel and said, you stay here, we'll take care of you, we'll feed you. So what can you do to honor someone like that? Well, what you do is you basically put a foundation in place that honors his memory. And so what we did is we developed a foundation called Community Aces. <clears throat> now Community Aces, again, I talked a little bit earlier about time, treasure, and talent. What we had at that point was talent and time. We didn't have the treasure anymore. That's what, we had at, that's what we lost during the recession. So we couldn't necessarily stroke that check anymore. But I looked around and I saw the, the fabulously talented people that we had, and I knew that we could basically put them to work to make a difference. And so Community Aces is basically founded just upon that. Let's go find organizations that need us. Let's go find organizations where we either through giving them volunteers or giving them professional talent that we can either help them achieve their financial goals or we can take some of the burdens of having to actually pay for talent off of their, you know, their payroll, their table. And we started to have fun with this. Before we did it though, what we did is we talked about all of our employees in the corporate office, which is where we did our, uh, the, the kind of the beta or the trial run. And we said, what is it that you want us to do. Because we wanted to make sure that the organizations that we were partnering with were the organizations that our, our employees, our workforce, actually wanted to be a part of. And they told us, it was interesting. So they came back to us and they said, we wanna do children's charities, we like things that have to do with education, we like things that have to do with, for example, cancer or cancer research, but hey, not so much interested in the arts. And that helped us because now we could kind of go out and find all of these different organizations that we could partner with. So for example, one of them, Gateway Dragon Boat Festival, partnered with Signature Health Foundation. We did crazy things like, you know, going and helping Camp Rainbow. We worked with organizations like the Polar Plunge, you know, where you jump in the water on New Year's Day. And hey, listen, if we could help someone raise money, we didn't care what it was. But what we did is we went to our properties, we have 16 casinos across the United States, and we said, you have to find what's important in each of your communities. You have to find the organizations that you basically can go and work with where you're gonna add specific value. So in some cases it was things like Polar Plunge, in others it was Habitat for Humanity. And that is me and that baseball cap, putting that, that blue tape up, and that was shortly before I fell in the can of paint. So I was told, you may supervise from this point forward, but you are not allowed to touch any more tools. Uh, food banks, something that we've really done all across the United States, not only in terms of going and helping them, in terms of stocking shelves or, or moving supplies around, uh, but also in terms of donating to food banks. Obviously, 
Uh, we run multiple restaurants, 36 restaurants across the portfolio, work very closely with the food banks, work very closely uh, locally with the USO, you know, putting Christmas packages together for the troops that are going to be here that can't go home. And one of the other things that we realized is not only could we just give them volunteers, not only could we basically make our workforce available to help them, but we also could leverage our workforce to help them raise money. So this was the Go St. Louis Marathon, and we raised almost, or helped to raise, almost $40,000 for Haven House St. Louis by being part of their team. So if you look what we've done across the United States, we've actually helped these organizations raise millions of dollars just by giving them our people and making their time available to these organizations in order to be able to use it. Now what we started to do is we realized, as we really had some momentum there, that we had the ability not just to work with these organizations, but to honor our own employees as well. So every year we have something called the Chairman's Award, where we actually would give out awards to our best performing properties. And our highest award that you can win right now is the Community Ace Award. So we go across the entire enterprise and we ask all of our casinos to give us the names of non-managerial employees who have done amazing things in their community so that we can bring them to the Chairman's Award, give them a substantial cash award themselves, and then an award to an organization of their choice that is given to them by a member of the Goldstein family to thank them for what they're doing. We also made the decision this year, which was a lot of fun, on Make a Difference Day, which was back in October, to sit there and say, okay, there's all kinds of things that we do as groups, and there's all kinds of things that we do, you know, whether it's the Go St. Louis Marathon or Dragon Boat, what can you do on your own? You know, what can you do just in terms of what we call a random act of kindness? So all across our portfolio, again, because we challenged our community ACE teams, all across the United States, they delivered donuts to firehouses, you know, or literally sent a thank you note to a local police officer, or whatever it might be. But the thing that's most gratifying to me, and, and that I love the most through this, is as we continue to see the momentum from this, as we continue to watch community ACEs expand across the United States, we really started to see individuals step up. We really started to see people say, I want to be a bigger part of this. So if you look just at my team in St. Louis, and I only have 120 of my 7,500 employees here, but if you look just at my team in St. Louis, I have one employee who's currently serving as the president of the Gateway Chapter of the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation, and as a founding board member of Launch St. Louis. I have a lovely young woman who works for me who has chaired several of the local Relay for Life events. I have another young woman who's working for me right now who is the chair of the Hope Fest Gala for Haven House next year. And I can go through my entire corporate staff and just about every single person has done something to contribute to Community ACEs this year because at this point, it has become such a part of our culture. Now, one of the other things that we did, because we realized it was so important, was to bring our customers into the conversation as well. Because our customers really like it when we do these things, and actually our customers like to participate. So we've had all kinds of fun with them, bringing them into various events, whether it's canned food drives or, or whatever it might be. And so we started really actively through our social media platform, promoting community ACEs. So all those of you who are social media experts, like us on Facebook, we would love for you to do that. And we would also love for you to follow us on Twitter uh, using the hashtag Community Aces. And if you'd like to follow us on our website, uh, our website is there. Now, I just want to say, we don't raise any money for ourselves. We don't do any. The only thing that we do is help organi other organizations. This is if you just want to see as you look at uh, possibly introducing this in other places, these are the kind of things that we're doing. And then what was really fun is we also took our platform and we introduced it literally to the entire gaming uh, industry through the American Gaming Association's All In for Giving and Volunteering platform. So we basically took a little idea and we turned it into something that went all across the United States and then all across the gaming industry. And it was all coming out of the recession because we couldn't write a check to charities anymore, and we wanted to do something to support them. 
So where are we right now? Uh, we're a couple years into this. Remember I said that we started in 2009. Uh, 2009, we just did that as a beta in our corporate office before we really rolled it out across the United States. And every year it grows and it grows and it grows. So right now, I have 7,500 employees. I have 3,500 volunteers. Think about that. 3,500 volunteers. That's almost half our workforce, or more than half our workforce that's part of this. Last year in 2012, we participated in and or supported 750 different events, different charities who benefited from our volunteers and everything that we were doing. And believe it or not, volunteered almost 19,000 hours. And these are for organizations that literally, in some cases, could not survive if it wasn't for the time and the talent that we give them. Now, we do give them treasure as well. So to the extent that there are organizations that we are very involved in, we will buy tables at galas or we'll buy ads and program books or something like that. And as I said, we're always working with local food banks and sponsoring them. But this is really about leveraging the power of acts of kindness. And just going back to kind of what my father said, you know, one person can make a difference, no matter how hard it is, no matter how bad the economy is. And that's one of the things that drives me absolutely crazy when I talk to businesses and they say, oh, we don't have a philanthropy, you know, philanthropy platform, we don't have a charitable giving because we don't have any money. You have people. Okay? You have talented people, and those people basically can help organizations. So turn them loose. Find an organization, find a charity, find something that you basically can get behind and you can sponsor, because it makes a huge difference. So Community Aces was invented here, but it is portable, it is replicable, and it is powerful. And if you want to know how powerful it is, all you have to do is go and talk to one of the members of those 750 different charities or organizations that we were able to help in the last year alone, and it continues to grow every year. It's easy, and these organizations, they really need us. So Community Aces, I would love to see replicated, not only across the entire United States, but across the entire world. So thank you.